timing. Life's all about timing. So I wanted to do a video explaining how to static time, in this case small block, big block, Chevy, they're both the same, and I mean a lot of stuff's all the same. So the idea is you have to get the <clears throat> spark in time with the way the motor is going to roll over and, uh, and make compression. So obviously, hopefully you guys know this at this point, a motor is going to suck in you know, uh, air through the carburetor mixed with fuel. It's going to put it in the, uh, the combustion chamber by pushing the piston up into the cylinder head. You want both valves closed. The fire makes compression, goes down. Now, the timing of the valves opening and closing and when the spark plug fires is key. So now, when people say top dead center or, or whatever you want to call it there, that's when we're going to talk number one. The number one piston is at top dead center, which it's as far up as it'll go, both valves are closed and it's ready to start going back down the hole. Now when you want the spark to fire, you want it to fire in degrees before the piston is all the way at the top. So standard Chevy is like 8 degrees or something like that, 8, 10 degrees. So 8 or 10 degrees of rotation before that piston's at the top and wants to go back down, you want to ignite that mixture in there, so by the time it's at top dead center, that explosion's going and it's boogieing straight down. That's kind of the, the nitty gritty of it. Now to do this, we're going to do a few different things. Obviously we have our distributor, this is your standard, this is used, old, GM HEI. Same principle goes to a point style with an external coil or mini distributor or any of those things. We have our test light. And the other thing we're going to use in this, just because it's easier, is I got a little switch to bypass the starter so you can roll the motor over. Now, what everybody says and what is true, you want to get to start the motor at top dead center. So you want to pull out number one spark plug. Here, we should try all over the place here. Chevy is uh, driver side front. Put your finger over it and you're going to bump it until you feel the compression. So the air coming out the spark plug hole. Uh, blow your finger away. There we go. So it's just starting. There we go. So it blew my finger off. Now what I'll show you, there's a timing mark on the harmonic balancer and there's going to be a timing tab on the timing cover. The timing tab will typically have zero and then negative, so retarded timing or advanced timing. And if you roll the timing mark to the timing tab at zero, that means number one will be top dead center and everything. You can check with the valves and all that sort of stuff, but we're gonna trust it. I know it's a good motor, I know it's all together. So that's where we're gonna get first. I'll get that lined up. I'm just gonna use, I think it's a 5 8 wrench or something like that. We're gonna crank it over there and I'll show you. Okay. So when you have your finger over the spark plug hole and it starts to blow your finger off, that just means you're on the, the compression stroke up. Now, you can get a pretty good idea where it's going to be, but you got to fine tune it, which takes you right in here. Now this is going to be a little, a little tight. So that's your balancer. You see this little yellow mark right there? That's the mark on the balancer I'm talking about. And this tab right here, we're lined up, might be blocking the light here, but it's right on zero. So it's right at top dead center. Now if you go further, that way, that means the timing's retarded and it'll be firing after the piston's already going down. If you're up here, which is where we're gonna be, right around eight degrees, that's the goal, it'll be firing before. So what I'm actually gonna do with this wrench, i do this one-handed, so we're gonna back her up. That's four, that's, that's about eight. Hopefully I'll show up there. So now, when we get the distributor all lined up in there, so I'm going to show you, and we get it cracking proper, we're going to static time this thing. It should fire to life right at eight degrees of timing. Okay, so this is a distributor. Now this cap and, uh, and base only fit one way on the bottom side. Uh, right there, there's a little little square 
So it's only going to fit the one way. They lock together. So you know that's right. Now you flip this over. And now I mean, I don't know if there's a rule of thumb with this. This is how I always do it. I'm pretty sure it's how it is. This one right here is your number one cylinder. So we're going to mark that on the base as well. So now when you take the cap off, what's happening, this gear is meshed with the camshaft. At the, at the back of your cam, there's a the gear which is spinning it. And at the very bottom, see this little bar? That actually goes in the oil pump drive. So the cam is turning this gear, which is then turning for up there, and it's also going to then go downstairs and get your oil pressure. So it all is pretty important. Now when this is spinning around, it's flinging spark at all your little um, contacts. Anyways, if we line this up just like that, it'll be in the car. We have our rotor lined up there. That will be top dead center. It's right in the middle. Zero degrees. So we're going to move it you know, eight degrees or so ahead. And what we're going to do that, we have to slide this thing in. Now it's important when you're going to put it in, it's going to mesh with the camshaft and it has to mesh with the oil pump drive. It's never going to mesh with the oil pump drive. I've done this, I don't know, almost 100 times, maybe one out of 100, it'll just fit. Because what are the odds it's going to be exactly that way? So, two ways of doing it. Once you're meshed into the cam, you can bump the motor over, it'll fall in. I've done that lots. Or you can get into the screwdriver and physically turn the oil pump drive so it'll look the opposite. It'll basically, that's like a flathead. Uh, screwdriver style like the the bar that goes across it'll look like a flathead screw it's just a slot you put your head your screwdriver in there you can turn it then it'll fit right in so that's what we're going to do we're going to fit it in there and again we're going to set it up by rotating the distributor just a little bit once we get the cap and power and all that to it and once we're going to pull a spark plug out and ground it and when it snaps that's how you'll know, because the motor's set to eight degrees. That's when it's firing, it'll be eight degrees before top dead center. You could do this at any one, you could do it at zero, you can do it at 10, 12, whatever it is. It's a pretty darn good baseline. So you should be able to put it in, once you get it snapping, because uh, it's gonna be acting as if it was rotating, you're set. I hope I'm saying this right. It makes sense in my head. Anyways, we'll uh, move the camera and get this fit in there. Okay, so we got our distributor pull out our little uh, rag. Now the way these fit, I mean, again, maybe you can do this wrong. I'm not even too sure this way I've always done it. Uh, your back in advance always goes to the passenger side. We're gonna line up the rotor with the mark so it's pretty close. So you're in the ballpark. Make sure you have a gasket on there. So there we are. Holy crap. Well, remember when I said it's kind of one, oh, we're one tooth out, but the, uh, let's we'll see if it actually lines up. What's going on here? There, there we go. We're close, not exact. So what it actually is, in this case, we can cheat it. You could spin the uh, oil pump drive, which will get you exactly right there, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to pull it out. We're going to move it ahead one little bit so it fits in that little tooth and it fit right down to the bottom. Now, oof, unfortunately, by cheating at one tooth, for us to be right at top dead center, we're in the firewall. So we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to pull it out. And this, people hate when I do this, but I love doing it this way. Oh, actually that worked out. And I just turned it when we pulled it out. Nope. No, I didn't. So pull it out. Get it one gear over. If I can. I'm struggling here. There we go. So now, you see it doesn't want to fall into place. We're going to bump the motor. This is a lazy way of doing it. You absolutely could do it with a uh, screwdriver. No, I'm not doing that. There we go. You guys all saw it fall in. So now we're in. Now all you gotta do 
go back to your uh, your balancer and turn it back to uh, eight degrees. It's lots of splaining, I know, but trust me, if you do this, it'll work. So when I bump the motor to line up the oil pump drive and have the distributor fall in, the motor became uh, obviously it was rotating around. So I put the wrench back on and we moved our mark right back to where it should be. So we're back at the eight degrees like we showed earlier. Now here's the magic in the timing. So we got the rotor in and we're lined up with our little, our little black mark. So that's right there. We're number one, top dead center, right at zero degrees, it's firing. Now here's how you advance and retard the timing. You see the gear which is in the camshaft is attached through a rod, like all the way up to the rotor. So when you turn this, it advances or retards the timing because attached to that is the cap. So the cap can turn and move. That is fixed, that's spinning around, it's doing its thing. But you can move the cap itself, it's no different than that. So if it wants to spark right here, but you move it, the cap, it's still sparking in the same spot, but the cap itself is moving, advancing or retarding the timing. So now what we're gonna do, uh, in this case, there is one wire we have to hook up. It says battery, so that needs 12 volts, and that powers the coil, which is in there. So we're gonna put this on with the four screws. We have it marked where we want it. We know what number one is, so we got a pretty good idea. We'll run 12 volts. Which is one of these wires I have to terminate. I put a new wiring harness in this car, but it's got to terminate it. Put it in. We'll turn the key on, and it'll have 12 volts to the coil by connecting this little connector. We'll run our wire, and I'll show you what I mean with a spark plug. And we're going to ground it out just on the intake manifold. So now what I've done, put the cap on. We had it pointing at number one. So we're just going to test it real quick. I'll have to kind of retime it afterwards. But we've marked the rotor to the mark on the uh, distributor, so they're in line, which means we're eight degrees advanced on the motor and it should be firing. So now, if we move this back and forth just a little bit, it should crack it. So there you go. So the reason that's happening, we have power going to the, the uh, plug, we have ground to the intake manifold, we're doing the same thing if it was in the car. So I'll reset that, but that's essentially what we've done. I'm going to put a new set of plugs in it. I'll run the uh, the plug wires. If you don't know the order of it, Google it. It's super easy. Uh, literally, Google Images has like this yellow or orange one. I'll, I'll put it up in there if I remember. Follow it. It's super simple. Run all your wires. This is junk stuff. I mean, if you're doing a tune-up, new plugs, new wires, new cap, new rotor, all those things is just stuff I had. Let me look at the car putting it in. But uh, that's irrelevant, we're just doing the timing thing. So we'll get that set. Once we get it running, we're gonna have to work fast. This thing has no cooling system or ever in it. When you set the time properly, you wanna have the vacuum advance plugged or blocked off. We'll make sure we're at the eight degrees. We done. Okay, <laughs> so we got the plug wires where they should be. Um, we've got static times, everything like that. Uh, it's still dead cold. You know, haven't heard it yet. Still touch the exhaust. Uh, there's no fuel system, so I just filled the carburetor up with gasoline. Uh, now we're going to trick it, and we're going to use the little bump start to fire it. We do a power to the coil through the key, but it should just uh, flash to life. It'll be embarrassing if it doesn't. So there you go. Static time. That was exciting. Now, before anyone judges, there's no exhaust manifold gaskets or any of those things in there. This was a timing video, not an exhausting video. Well, it was an exhausting video. So now at this point, you know, once you have a cooling system and proper fueling and all that sort of stuff, you'd simply rip off the uh, vacuum advance, plug it on probably the carburetor stud or If you don't do that, this will be a vacuum leak, which you don't want. You can double check the timing, adjust it whatever way you want. Uh, Chevy goes clockwise, so if you want to advance the timing, you would move the distributor uh, that way, I believe. Retard it would be that way. So that's it. Whatever runs good. 
I mean, it's always nice to have a nice baseline, set the timing first. Once the timing is set, then you can adjust the carburetor, do whatever you want from there. But, uh, full tutorial video. Hopefully it worked out and you guys can use it. And if I'm dead wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments. But, it did run, so I can't be all wrong. Alright, see you later.